Well, this is Jim W4JBM and I want to talk a little bit. Uh, I've been going through a couple of the restoration and repair projects that I've been working on on some old test equipment. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this device. This is a Hewlett Packard 608D uh, signal generator. It covers frequencies from 10 megahertz up to 420 megahertz and has a calibrated output. Uh, it's really a pretty high quality uh, piece of test gear. Also fairly large in size and weighs about 67 pounds, uh, at least that's what the manual says. It seems like a little more when I, uh, when I was trying to move it around, but uh, uh, a very impressive piece of test equipment in a lot of ways. And you can see down inside the construction in the center there is, a, I believe it's cast aluminum housing that's got uh, most of the, the frequency dependent uh, components in it, the tuning uh, capacitor and other things. Uh, it's a mechanical beast. Uh, just a lot of a lot of little things that uh, gears and and pulleys and stuff like that that uh, that move around. Uh, in the back, kind of towards the bottom there, uh, there's a a shaft, but below that is a uh, there's a tube with a slot in the top of it. That's the attenuator, and I still haven't dug into all the details, but it, it, the, the attenuator is a little different than what you run into on most uh, RF signal generators these days. Instead of having something like a step attenuator or a variable attenuator that uses uh, resistance, this actually uses an attenuator that uh, depends on distance. And there's a signal source and then a pickup probe, and that pickup probe moves up, up and down uh, through that slot. Uh, to vary the uh, the attenuation and, and the ultimate output. What that lets you do is get down to very, very low uh, levels, uh, microvolts, a few microvolts uh, of output, and uh, still have the necessary isolation. A lot of times with, uh, with resistors, if you try and get more than 20, 30 dB of, uh, of isolation in any one uh, particular, like a T-pad or something like that, uh, you start having issues with, uh, with bleed over. Uh, so a very well built piece of equipment and uh, also one of the things that, that's kind of interesting is the uh, uh, the way the capacitors are constructed uh, they actually have a, uh, a a nut on the other side that holds them to the chassis so they're not the twist tab type they're they're actually uh, inserted through a, a circular hole and then a nut on the bottom holds them into place and they are very well made. Actually, uh, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I tend to uh, tend to recap everything uh, just to, to make sure that it's uh, going to work for a while. And uh, with this one, uh, the capacitors, I tested them. Uh, well, I didn't test all of them, but I tested a couple of them, and they all seem to be in great shape. So I went ahead, brought it up, and uh, and it's been working fine. So I thought I'd go through and talk a little bit about uh, just how it works because it is uh, it's from a different time and uh, it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, of course, the main thing that, or the first thing you would do is set the uh, set the frequency, and with that, there's a frequency range switch here, and you've got bands A through E, and that fits with uh, what's up here on the uh, the main dial right now I'm set and you can also see that there's a uh, red pointer over here uh, that shows you which band you're on uh, and that's coupled down to the uh, the band switch um, but uh, right now I'm set to uh, a band and from the dial there you can see I'm showing a little bit under uh, some those are uh, 200 kilohertz so be about uh, 18 point8 just a little under 18 point8 uh, megacycles or megahertz um, the main tuning dial is is here and you can actually the the the, the actual the the markings on the dial are fairly accurate but you can use the numbers on this dial to interpolate uh, between them so you can figure out where uh, you know if I'm exactly at say uh, 19 and I can read that I've got 44 here and then if I move down to where I'm exactly at 18.8 uh, according to the dial I can see that I've got uh, 89 here so 89 minus 44 would be 45 and so I know that uh, you know there's 45 increments uh, that cover that 200 kilohertz uh, 
portion of the band. And with that, knowing that, you can, uh, especially with a little bit of familiarity um, with the instrument and, and uh, the methods of interpolation, you can start getting fairly accurate down to to the, the level, you know, 10, 10 kilohertz or, or so uh, would not be an unreasonable level of accuracy to, to expect to get to. Uh, on something like that, the, the 10 to 20 megahertz band. So I've got the frequency adjustment. I've also got, uh, there's a fine frequency adjustment down here. Uh, the, this was a, uh, a feature that showed up on later models. The, the earlier models uh, did not have that. Um, it, the output is, uh, it's down here in this corner, and this is the, the calibrated uh, attenuator output. To get this to work there's a meter up here that has uh, the current output showing the current output and then there's a uh, output level adjustment there's a uh, kind of a granular one and then there's a, a fine fine one also uh, so these controls are a little bit tight well that one i guess doesn't operate anywhere near like you would uh, normally expect so what i try and do uh, to get the the attenuator down here to be accurate there's a set point in the middle of this one, zero dBm, and I use the output level, and I adjust it down to zero dBm, and now I'm going to use the fine control just a little bit. So I'm at zero dBm. That means this down here is now calibrated. Uh, the top part of this dial is the output in dBm, so. Uh, I can, if I set it at zero dBm, uh, I've got zero dBm out, but now as I go around, um, I can go all the way down to uh, 125 uh, dBm below, actually it'd be a negative 125 uh, dBm. It, this dial is also calibrated, that, so the top calibration is in dBm, the bottom calibration is in millivolts or in microvolts. So I've, I go through here. I've got uh, there's 20 millivolts, 5 millivolts, 1 millivolt. Then it switches down to microvolts. So 500 microvolts, 100 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 1 microvolt. Uh, here's 2 microvolts and 1 microvolt. So you know, getting down to 1 microvolt with, um, with a reasonable degree of accuracy uh, is it's it's pretty impressive um, and there's not a lot of, uh, of bleed out of the signal so you're not uh, if you if you've got this connected to a receiver you don't have to wonder um, is some stuff getting indirectly coupled through the through the power line or uh, from just spray stray emissions from uh, this device uh, going into the other devices uh, so uh, there is also one last thing up, I guess it's in the frequency is and I didn't do it here but uh, there's this tremor adjust Actually, it was pretty close um, that you adjust to get maximum output um, just to make sure that things are uh, uh, and the output stage, basically the output stage of the amplifier is tuned. So there's a, a tracking stage, um, the, a tracking filter stage beyond the, uh, the frequency generation stage. And um, that, uh, that to, to um, excuse me, I uh, had a little camera glitch there. Um, but that output tracking stage, if it's off just a little bit, that lets you, uh, you trim it and get it back on frequency. Uh, so let's talk about some of the other features it has. So it has a built-in audio modulation, and there's modulation level. This I still haven't cleaned and calibrated this, so, uh, so things are a little off. Actually, that won't work at all until over here on the mode selection, um, I've got uh, what I'm currently on is CW, or just continuous wave, or just uh, generating a carrier. I can go to pulse output, and to use pulse output, there's a uh, external input for an external pulse control. Um, I believe it's something like a 30 volts uh, when it's on, zero volts when it's off type of signal. Um, and there's an external modulation also. So the external pulse would turn on and off the output. Um, there's certain types of testing where you would uh, would use that. Uh, not something as a radio amateur we're likely to uh, to run into. There's a built-in 400 uh, cycle, 400 kilohertz or uh, 400 hertz uh, signal to modulate things with. And now when I come over here, if I uh, if I crank this up, I can can adjust the modulation. Like I said, I haven't worked on the dial and the calibration over there, so that's probably not 
not accurate. Um, there's also a 1000 hertz or 1 kilohertz uh, modulation built in. And I showed you the external modulation jack down at the bottom. Um, the external modulation, you switch to that. Uh, the signal that's coming in here uh, would, uh, would show up and, and you do the modulation level and the uh, modulation indi in indicator um, actually would be, be accurate there. You could in theory take something like an audio amplifier and uh, use that into the external modulation and basically get an amplitude modulated signal out uh, anywhere in the band. Um, probably not something real practical, but, uh, but kind of an interesting capability. Uh, on the front, there's a couple other things. They're just uh, the normal. There's a, the, the power input is on the front. There's no, uh, no connections on the back. Actually, this, this whole thing slides into a housing. And if you can see down here uh, in this area, there's actually a little wheel there that uh, that helps you roll it back into the housing and on the the back it's held uh with uh, uh four four fairly large uh bolts uh that have knurled uh handles on them uh just to hold it in place but all the uh all the output um and all the inputs and all the controls are uh, are here on the front um, so power power comes in on the front uh this is a removable uh, I would forget the name of these. These are fairly common uh, back then, though. It's I think it's called a motor motor jack uh, power connector. Um, they were standard. They were used for other things, but a lot of test equipment also used them. Uh, there is a uh, input fuse. So this is uh, an AC fuse on the input, and then there's also a DC fuse that is used to um, protect. The, in, in the, uh, the power supply uh, for the radio uh, in case of some kind of internal short. Uh, there's a power indicator and the power switch is down here. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, uh, there's the output level, there's the fine tuning. Um, so let's talk a little bit here about the, the crystal calibrator and, and what that means and how that's used. Uh, so the dial is reasonably accurate um, like here at 18 to 19 uh, megahertz it's it's marked off uh, every 200 kilohertz and with the the other dial you can get fairly close but how do you know you're right on say at uh, just picking a, a frequency because it'll actually be a, be a convenient convenient one to do the math with I say that you you want to know you're exactly on uh, 20 20 megahertz are you you know the dial is saying that right now is that dial is the dial accurate or not so built into this is a uh, 5 kilohertz or excuse me a 5 megahertz um, reference oscillator and with this you can set the output level of that reference oscillator the output level of the oscillator uh, is fed into a mixer along with the the signal of the signal generator itself and then they're beat together and down here this crystal calibrator output is actually a headphone jack where you can use a pair of high impedance headphones and you can listen to the beat frequency note uh, between the frequency calibrator and uh, the generator itself so i could go through and uh, i'd adjust this to some comfortable level of volume i would then uh, adjust this until the uh, the zero beat uh, note basically occurred so that you'd hear, hear some kind of frequency like you would um, uh, a CW signal on, uh, on shortwave and you would tune until that frequency nulled out at about zero hertz or was subaudible uh, and be within a few hertz of, um, in this case with uh, 20 megahertz, you'd be at the fourth uh, harmonic of the five megahertz generator. Now to, to adjust to that, so if I get there and I see that the dial is just a little bit off, there's a control here that lets me move the, uh, the pointer uh, itself to get right on, right on frequency. Um, so I talked a little bit earlier about the, uh, the output. Uh, we've dropped down. Why have we dropped down? Oh, because I'm externally modulating and don't have anything hooked up to it. So uh, I've got the, uh, the output here. Um, and I'm actually trying to get this. So it's up on the oscilloscope. I had it cranked down to one millivolt output, which is not going to work very good on my oscilloscope. But you can, 
you can see now that the uh, the signal's coming out on the oscilloscope. Um, this is around a, a 20 megahertz uh, signal, or it should be reasonably close. It's, yeah, right around 20 megahertz. Things jump around a little bit. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what's what's going on there, um, but it's pretty close to, to 20 megahertz output. Um, and I adjusted the dial, not exactly there, but then if I change the range, go from range A, say, to range B, uh, B is the 20 to 42 megahertz band, you can see that the, uh, the output signal level has dropped quite a bit, um, both on the oscilloscope and on the meter, so I'd go over to the output level and adjust back to uh, 0 dBm. And you can see that the uh, the signal on the scope has has picked back up, and so I'm on that new band uh, and I'm operating. Uh, so that and then the output is down here. The output is a um, uh, an in style connector. Right now I've got a N to UHF to BNC. Um, I know I've got some N to BNCs around, um, and I'm going to have to use that. I've also got this terminated F50 on load. Then my oscilloscope probe is uh, clipped on down here. The only thing that's uh, not, not exactly like the manual describes, in here <coughs> there's this, and you can see this says uh, Cal, Cal RF output. Uh, this output is actually on the same frequency that's being generated, and I, I, I assume that means calibrated RF output or, or, or something like that. Uh, but it seems to be the, the same frequency. I don't know if that was used to drive a frequency counter so that you didn't have as much dependency on the main dial or if there's something else. I need to dig into that a little bit more. You can see there's a, a small hole there. And there's also a small hole on the other side of this. There's actually a, a nameplate that's typically there uh, according to the manual. So, so I got some kind of uh, RF output that, like I said, I need to, uh, to dig into. But anyway, this is, uh, to me, this is a, a pretty interesting piece of test gear uh, and we'll probably see some use. I've got, uh, I've got a good uh, uh, digitally synthesized uh, signal generator that's good up to uh, 100 megahertz. Out, or no, actually 50 megahertz output. Um, I've also got a, uh, a signal generator. Uh, it's uh, from the TM500 series on, uh, from, from Tektronix that goes up to, I believe, uh, 240. So you know, this one can, can, in theory, go up to 420 megahertz. Uh, and it can do so accurately. The, um, the, the Tektronix has a... Uh, it doesn't have a, it's, it's got a um, normalized level, so if you set it to a certain output, uh, there's a semi-calibrated um, adjustment on it that lets you set the output level, and it's, it remains constant as you tune across frequency, uh, which a lot of lower cost signal generators won't do that if you change your frequency from, say, 10 megahertz to 20 megahertz. You'll also see your output level typically decrease quite a bit. Um, so with the, the Tektronix, uh, it has a, uh, a constant output, and then, uh, of course, the, the synthesized one has a, a constant output, too. Um, but this one, I mean, this is, this is something that's useful. Uh, one of the big problems with the Tektronix is that it does not have any kind of modulation. So um, I, can, I can beat note uh, things against each other, but if I don't have a beat note uh, to work with, if, if it's on another oscillator, if I'm just trying to do something like peak an IF coil or something like that at a high frequency or an input stage at a higher frequency, it really doesn't work that well. This with the uh, with the modulated signal uh, will work better. So anyway, this is a, a little longer than uh, uh, some of my other videos, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do one on the restoration. I am gonna clean this up, um, but then it probably will be uh, moving over to the side. Um, and and like I said, I I expect it to see a little bit of use. I appreciate you watching. Um, also, would appreciate any uh, likes or subscribes uh, if you like what you're seeing. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.